We're looking at an RO filter today. This is a 100 gallon per day RO unit from Finer Filters. As you can see from the box, there are also two different volumes below this one. There's a 75 gallon and a 50 gallon. So let's have a look inside and see what we get. We have fixtures and fittings, which we'll go through in a moment. The actual unit itself is here. We've got our RO membrane there, separately packed. And then inside we have the unit. Okay, so here's all the bits out the box. And you can see you get a pretty complete kit. In fact, you get every single thing that you need when you buy one of these units. I've got a 75 gallon in my other shed. Um, I've been using it for about two years and I can tell you it's worked flawlessly the whole time. The unit itself is a four stage and we can see all the different stages. So on the right hand side is where the water goes in. This is where your mains water goes in. It goes through your pre-filter. So this is a really fine mesh. Captures all of the debris and the rubbish, sort of particulate stuff in the water. So the next stage is then the carbon filter. And this is where a lot of the chlorines and organics and things like that gets taken out. The first two sections are just to take out the bulk of the rubbish before we go through the really, really fine RO membrane. And that's where a lot of the smaller things get taken out. And essentially, once it's gone through the RO membrane, it should be almost pure water. So on the top, we have a fourth stage, which is the resin filter. This is the DI, deionization part of the RODI unit. And this is um, important if you want really pure water because it removes a lot of the stuff that the other filters can't really grab hold of. And that is stuff like calcium, magnesium ions. Also, it might grab hold of nitrates and phosphates and silicas. So it's quite an important stage if you really want that pure water, especially for things like a marine system where you want pure RO to come out the other end. In terms of fittings, we have essentially everything that you need to get up and going. Um, these fittings here are all different ways of attaching it to your uh, water source. So the main bulk of it is actually to attach it to a household 15 millimeter copper pipe. Um, I'll be using most of those. We've also got a tap adapter. So you can use this on like a garage tap that's got the screw fitting on the end. A lot of garages and things have those taps. So you can just go straight onto those. We'll be going on to the mains. So we'll be using the silver and black fittings. I'll do that in a second and show you how it all works. We get four different uh, tubings. Now, they're color coded for a reason. You'll see on the uh, unit itself, it's got different colors and that indicates which color pipe work to attach. But in reality, you can use whichever color you like, but I like to follow uh, the way it's set up because it just means it's set up um, how it should be. And also it makes it a lot easier if you never set one of these up before, you just match the colors and away you go. We've got our instruction manual, which is pretty useful if you've never done this kind of thing before. And then we've got two handles. And these little handles are used for unscrewing the uh, filter cartridges. So they go around the outside of the cartridges and you just use it as a wrench essentially to open up the different parts of the filter. So before we install it, I just thought I'd show you what it looks like kind of deconstructed. So we can see here, these are the um, containers where the cartridges go into. They're really thick plastic. We've got a screw fitting and we've got a um, rubber seal around each end just to stop any leaks because these are under quite high pressure, uh, mains pressure. And then if you've got a booster pump on there, which increases the flow, it's going to be under even more pressure. So it's important to not let water come out. We've got the cartridges here. These come wrapped. Um, I guess it could be a quite simple mistake to not unwrap these before you set the whole system up. I don't think the system would actually work if you did that, but things like that can happen quite easily. So it's important to um, unwrap them. So we can see here that the carbon in this unit is made from coconut, which is quite a common thing to use for carbon in, the, in most industries. And the filtration is five micron, removes chlorine, taste, odor from the water and so on. And the other one, we've got the mesh filter. Um, again, five micron, and it tells you there, removes chlorine, impurities, dust. In the top section, we've got the RO membrane itself. This is where a lot of the fine filtration happens. Um, all of the extra stuff gets taken out. And that just fits straight into that part there. I've got to admit, RO filters, um, from the perspective of someone who's never used one before, are actually kind of scary. They look a bit complicated, don't they? 
But once you understand the basic of actually how the pipe work goes together, they're a lot less scary than you think. Um, it's simply just push fits. These little blue things are just uh, clips to stop them pushing in by accident. And then you just push the fitting in and the pipe comes out. And then when you put the pipe back in, it bites onto it and it can't be removed without some extreme force. So that's kind of it for the pipe work. And you'll notice that all around the unit, it's exactly the same stuff, even uh, down to where the waste comes out here. We've got a little valve, and then we've just got lots of push fit fittings. On the whole of it, they look really scary, but in reality, it's just a series of push fit pipes going to different filters, all in a kind of spiral. Another handy feature this particular unit's got is these holes. So this allows us to mount it using screws or brackets to any surface that we like, and we're gonna be putting it just here. I've set the RO filter up now, it's all plumbed in and uh, water is running through it. I've done all my pre-flushes. Now I've been using the fittings that come within the box. Uh, it's a little bit backwards because normally this pressure valve would be at the start and this particular part would be at the top, but it works for me to fit it this way. And I've got a separate stop cock there if I need to isolate any of this pipe work. So I didn't really need to use this isolation valve for its intended purpose. I'll just show you the pipe work and how it all goes together. I have added extra red pipe work because I've got quite a long distance to go. And um, you can see here we go into the input of the RO filter through the pre-filter membrane into the carbon. Then we will go into the RO membrane through the DI unit and then out this blue pipe. And that's where your lovely RO water will come from. The black pipe, as you can see here, is the waste. And that's where all the rubbish left over goes. And that's fixed in place straight down this drain. As they say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And what we're gonna do now is actually test what the uh, TDS reading is on the water that's coming out of this RO unit because that's the important factor. For this, we're gonna be using one of these TDS meters, very accurate. Uh, device and this will give us a pretty good reading as to how much rubbish this uh, RO unit is removing from my system. So to begin with we're going to need a base level and that base level is going to be the tap water that's coming out of my mains. Um, and this is basically raw and this is what we're going to be cleaning up with the RO unit. So let's have a look. In tap water the TDS is 154. So that's actually not too bad for tap water. Um, in a normal aquarium, that would be fine. Freshwater aquarium, that'd be fine. But in a saltwater aquarium, that would be absolutely disastrous because that 154 could be made up of anything, nitrates, phosphates, um, pesticides, all sorts of stuff. So that's what we want to remove and that's what the RO basically removes. Right, let's just check what the uh, TDS from the RO filter is then. So a good result is around a 95 to 98% removal of the TDS from the water. So uh, I think we're expecting somewhere between maybe uh, one PPM to maybe five PPM because our tap water is quite good anyway. So we'll just have a look, see what it is. So we've got a reading of zero, which means that the RO units removed practically everything from the water, which is an impeccable result, in fact. I was expecting it to be at least one or two, um, but we can see it's at zero. And just to prove that it's not a 40 TDS meter, I'll put it into my plant bay here, and we can see the TDS in there is 202. So it's definitely working. Um, we have just got a really good result. I'll just double check, TDS of zero. So there we have it. What a great result from this RO unit. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have, leave a like below. Also subscribe to my channel. Once again, thanks for watching and happy fish keeping.